Hey guys, we're in Southern California. I'm with an Easy Motion rep named Joe Marcu. Check out this van. We came down here to uh, some nice little riding spots. We're gonna see those in a few minutes. But I wanted to point out that we've got a modified Easy Motion Evo Cross in the van. And that's the one with the hub motor. We've got a nicer Fox 32 suspension fork uh, built onto that thing. I think that's Joe's toy. He goes and plays. He's got some you know, clipless pedals and stuff. I've been studying all the specs like I do. And what we've got here is the Rebel Cross. Very similar. A frame comes in three different sizes, hydroformed aluminum alloy. I'm looking at the size medium, which fits me perfectly. I'm about 5'9", 135 pounds. This is a fun bike. And it's basically just a mid-drive version. Instead of having the Dapu hub motor, 500 watts, this one has a 250 watt nominally rated uh, Yamaha. It's a PW series. So it's like kind of their base level motor. They also have PW SE with like a higher RPM limit, maybe around uh, 110. And then they have the PWX, which goes up to 120. Okay, so the reason I'm saying that is because this one's relatively lightweight. It's a little bit more affordable. And what it allows you to do is have quick release on the front and rear, a uh, little bit nicer weight distribution right here. Uh, the Yamaha battery compared to the Easy Motion sort of proprietary semi-integrated down to battery but otherwise i mean there, there's a lot of similarity between these two bikes including the price so a minute ago i was talking about the upgraded fox fork there that's an air fork versus a spring fork and you can see we've got steel stanchions here with 63 uh, millimeters of travel and i believe this is just 30 millimeter stanchion so you know a little bit heavier it does have preload adjust under that cap along with compression adjust and full lockout over here. But you know, it's just, this is, it's kind of a cross type of fork. It's not as heavy duty as the Fox fork over there. And again, that one has alloy stanchions and they're anodized black. So a really cool look. The neat thing is you can upgrade this yourself if you want to, because it's a tapered head tube. But again, being a cross bike, this one's so cool because you could, you know, attach a water bottle right here, maybe a folding lock. You could put some fenders on. We do have uh, eyelets for that and some attachment points even here on the fork. I do like that. That's a lighter weight fork It's a little bit narrower. It's sleek. It matches the paint job on this And then we've also got bosses for adding a rear rack So you could turn this into a commuter bike by week and then on the weekend you could take it out on some light trails uh, And you know the tires here. We've got a little bit of tread. These are 700 by 40 C a little bit narrower so efficient even the tread it's not going to make a whole lot of noise you've got basically a solid stripe down the middle with a little bit of grip as you go out to the sides 10 speed shimano dior drivetrain this is 11 to 36 teeth and then up here 38 tooth on this alloy fsa chain ring 170 millimeter cranks cheap plastic welgo pedals but again that's a 20 dollars upgrade if you want to get some bigger maybe like some magnesium welgos or something like that or you can do what joe did and get some some clipless one thing i noticed while i was looking at the drivetrain is this direct mount plastic guide look at that so that that chain is not going to fall off and it might help to protect your pant leg if you're using this during the week as a commuter or something uh, but this also doubles as a potential derailleur mount because the yamaha motors they offer multiple chain rings and that's what we've got over here so this is the rebel gravel i mean you can see it's got the drop bars and stuff a little bit more expensive how much was this one 30 this one's 33.99 versus 27.99 yeah so you know there's a step up but you're getting some uh, performance you know different tires on this and the double chain ring so you can see that down here um, up to 48 tooth in the front with that derailleur so that's something that you could upgrade to even over here on the cross and i love that to me that's just it's really neat you can start to you know really let your imagination go wild with what you could do with this bike you get it for 27.99 and then over time you change the fork if you want to you add a derail your some more a chain ring options if you want to there's a lot of potential here and a really bulletproof like durable motor system along with the battery pack i do like these the design is is really great because it slides out to the side um about six and a half pounds on that battery by the way weighed the bike just a minute ago and it was like 49 and a half pounds so you know right around 50 not bad that's for the medium size frame um, just really good weight distribution and the battery pack here is 36 volt 11 amp hour so you know 396 watt hours pretty good again six and a half pounds so I always take those off when I'm hanging these bikes on like a bike rack or even if it's a, a hitch rack or something just nice to be able to do the standard you know these are the quick release skewers right here they they work pretty well it's not giving you quite as much like control and maybe support the there's no boost 100 millimeter hub spacing here but that's again this is a cross bike it makes a lot of sense it's sort of about 
saving money in a, in a sense while giving you performance where you really need it. And I love that the spokes are black, the hubs are black, the rims are black. These tires, they don't have reflective sidewalls. They don't, I didn't see any puncture protection rating or anything, but you know, they're still Kendas. These are called the Courier. And coming back to where they did spend the money, we've got these Shimano M315 dual caliper, uh, dual piston uh, calipers down there, and then the Ice Tech rotors. So that's aluminum alloy in the center of the rotor and then steel on the outside. So that makes it a little bit lighter. It helps to dissipate heat. 180 millimeters up front, 160 millimeters in the rear. And again, quick release. And I love where they've positioned this kickstand. I love that it has a kickstand. The gravel bike does not, okay? So this could be bouncing around if you're on certain trails or whatever, and you can easily remove it. They've got the nice, um, you know, provisions for adding a kickstand. It is adjustable length. It's a pretty good setup overall. It's just nice to have it when you're commuting and you know, you don't want the bike to fall over. Here's another view of the motor from the other side. Got a plastic skid plate on the bottom that I imagine is replaceable or it just helps to take some of the impact before you, you actually make contact with the motor. Pretty good ground clearance here. The chain ring does not go below the motor, so you're probably not gonna hit the teeth or anything and that's why we don't have a guide which saves some weight and stuff. Here's the charging port on the battery. And I'll just be honest with you, this is not my favorite charger because it's so big. It's like two and a half pounds and it's just, you can't remove the cable. So you, it, it's, it's long. I mean, even if you're bending the cables pretty aggressively, fitting that in a backpack, it's, it's not great. It, it just takes up more space. However, it does put out four amps. So it's a faster charger than some of the, you know, basic two amps that you see from other companies. And then just a plastic connector here, you can slide it on and it sort of twists and connects. To me, it's a little bit vulnerable, just the position of it, because you know, you've got it there and then oops, you bump the, the crank arm, it spins and it could bend or even break that, especially if it's sort of locked on on those little ridges, it sort of like clicks on. Again, I just feel like Yamaha is a big company. They've got great reliability with their motor. That's what dealers have been telling me. The battery design's great, tips from the side so that that top tube can be angled down. That's the Hydroform tubing, lower standover height. It's just the charger needs some work, in my opinion. There's room for improvement. I do like that the cables are all internally routed and they've got those nicer kind of grommets here. It makes it easier to service for dealers. Relatively clean cockpit up here, cheaper grips. These are rubber, ergonomic, but they could they could spin. You know, you see that? Like they, they're not locking grips. That's another affordable upgrade if you want to get some ergons or something. Three finger Shimano M315 levers with adjustable reach. So you can kind of bring those in a little bit and dial them in. Hydraulic is really nice compared to mechanical because you're not going to get the, the cable stretch and the right, which is usually the rear, would have to go further. And it's just, you have to use more hand at hand strength there. Uh, trigger shifter, Shimano Dior, two-way small lever, three-click large lever. So you can make multiple shifts very quickly, especially if you're going off-road. And Dior is a pretty nice, you know, component group set here. It's just, this one doesn't have the one-way clutch that I occasionally see on like real, you know, off-road mountain bikes, which would tighten this up and then loosen it to make servicing the rear wheel a little bit easier. So still lightweight, reliable, tucked in, staying pretty much out of the way if the bike tips or you, you know, you're riding next to brush. Um, just a, you know, pretty good drivetrain overall. I think there are just a few parts where it's like, okay, compromise a little bit on, uh, the quality of the component to keep that price right where it is. And Easy Motion has like a five year warranty. Absolutely. So that's one of the things that really sets Easy Motion apart from the rest of the electric bicycle industry. You have a lifetime warranty on the frame, but you have a five year fender to fender warranty on all parts. Yeah. Two year battery and one year in store labor warranty. So we will actually reimburse your dealer for the first year if there's a manufacturer's defect. On Fantastic. And Joe, yeah. you drive all year like California all the way up to Canada yeah. and, you know, servicing some of these dealers or getting them bikes. And, Absolutely. you know, how many dealers do you have in the U.S.? Or well, right it? now, I mean, it, it, that's an interesting number. I mean, we're well over 150 and growing. We have a chain of Congrats. stores. Thank yeah. you. We have a chain of stores in Canada that's uh, just about to come on board with us uh, from uh, outside of Toronto West, and they've got 44 locations. Wow. So that's really going to blow up. It's a global brand, man. It's I mean, yeah. it, this is oh, BH yeah, exactly. that owns Easy Motion. So Correct. you guys have fitness equipment. You've been around since 1909. Yeah. Uh, a lot of trust there. And for me, you know, these bikes, I've been reviewing them since like 2012, 2013. Yeah, that's right. I remember when you started with us. Yeah. That's right, with, that's, the, with the Neo Jumper. That's correct. Yeah. And way before you even had like any mid-drive options exactly. in the States, it was all the hub motors, which still serve a purpose. 
and you know gives you some options like maybe that's a little bit zippier feel this is fluid and it's natural i mean are there any other highlights between these two you know different drive train it's it's a great question one of the challenges that i think that the 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 general populace or industry has is they're thinking that hub drives are are dead and i can i i totally disagree there is a huge place for hub drives one of the benefits of a hub drive motor is the the ability to access the throttle we have plenty of riders that are getting a lot older and whether it's physical ailments or just the confusion for some folks that just don't understand shifting the ability to just ride and hit the throttle is a great way to get people on bikes and i think folks as an industry we want to get people on bicycles and then of course allowing them the opportunity to learn how to shift and then of course yeah we i mean i'm a fitness enthusiast so these are both fitness bikes and and admittedly you're going to get better range out of a yamaha mid it's efficient yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely however i'm not going to turn anybody away from getting on their bicycle especially if they want to commute to work hit the throttle to go to work and then physically so, but and here's ride the thing the okay home. that one that the evo the evo cross doesn't have a throttle right uh, the Evo Cross does have a throttle. It does. That actually, and I didn't want to interrupt your video. No, that's, that's okay. That's actually the Evo 27.5 Oh, Pro so I'm like, I'm like. last year. I noticed so that. So that the, doesn't have a throttle on it. Okay, so yeah. well, interesting. So if you are more leaning towards the city experience and you want that throttle, admittedly, you have to go down to level zero to use the throttle. Correct. So it's, it's a bit, kind of a separated system. Um, but you can get the cross bike experience with the throttle. Thank you. Yeah, you know, it's, it's the great feedback. And then to come back to well okay the strengths of the mid-drive it's like well balanced it's efficient uh but the yamaha pw system you know it doesn't have shift detection so you might be if you're kind of new at bikes and you're shifting through the gears you're putting some extra strain on the chain the derailleur the sprockets there's a little bit more wear so that i to me that's a bit more advanced um, it's really responsive on, on both systems. So you have like a torque sensor on the Evo line, Correct. you know, versus kind of a multi-sensor here with the Yamaha. Right, whereas here you're gonna have a torque sensor, speed sensor, and cadence sensor. So yeah. there is, I, I, I agree with you that, you that you need to be a seasoned rider at least a little bit to understand the shifting component. Um, know your terrain before you start shifting. Okay. And and it's this is why on some of the other bikes that we have, we'll have a Nexus 8 shifter for someone who's a novice and you can stop at a light and, oh, whoops. Internally geared hub. Yeah. And, yeah, right. So, so, you know, this is one of the more popular bikes. That's why we're focusing so much on like the cross because it's it gives it's a cross section of riding. And look at what we're standing on. I mean, yeah, you'll the be gravel. able to roll on some gravel, whether it's on a cross or whether it's on the rebel gravel. So oh, yeah. it's kind of the utilitarians. <laughs> of if, you, if I've got uh, a sensitive price point, I want to get great value and I want to get the one bike that can kind of do it all and maybe maybe not aggressively go into this kind of back country, but mm -hmm. I can at least use the fire roads and enjoy myself. And yet, like you'd mentioned, I want to be able to throw on fenders in a rack sure. and use it as a commuter product or just a general health and fitness product. I've got it here in the cross. And this is, again, a little bit more efficient tire. So the air volume, the surface area is somewhat limited and that's efficient, but a little bit less comfortable, 63 millimeters of travel versus maybe 80 or 100. Right. And then a hardtail. So, you know, this is 31.6 millimeters on that seat post. You could throw on a seat post suspension and, and get a Absolutely. little bit more of a full suspension feel. Get, get with yourself this. a body float suspension seat post or the, you know, it's an isolation seat post and it's going to change the, the whole ride experience yeah. on that for sure. Okay. Well, I'm going to jump into the display panel now, real quick. Uh, I love that they've got this remote button pad, really easy to reach and interact with, so you don't have to take your hands off while you're riding. The display panel itself is removable, so you don't have to leave that outside if you're parked at a rack, exposed to the elements and potentially scratching. And then over here on the button pad, there's also a micro USB port. I believe this puts out five volts, 500 milliamps. Uh, pretty good setup. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. So Joe is saying, yep, it does. And then there's this power button here. We press that. The display jumps to life is pretty big so it's easy to see it's mounted up high this does swivel a little bit as well We've got a power meter on the left clock in the middle speed right now it's in miles per hour and if you want to change the settings you can hold the power and s button simultaneously when you when you're booting it up Correct. and that's how you get in the, yeah so then down here i love that in addition to a, a bigger battery infographic with more bars we also have battery percentage and you can change through some of the other readouts by pressing that s button so now it's saying rpm pedal rpm uh, you heard me mention that the pw motor supports up to 100 rpm that's still pretty fast but for people who really want to spin there's a bit of a limitation there so that's one of the trade-offs with the uh, pw motor and we keep going so average speed we've got max speed uh, odometer 
There we go, and then distance. This is pretty cool, it's like a range estimator. So as I click the up or down keys and I change levels of assist, it approximate my range. So it's pretty full battery right now. And it says 88 miles on uh, Eco Plus and then 68 on Eco. So the higher I go, the more power I'm getting from the motor. And then standard 51 miles, high 45 miles. That's impressive, 45 miles on one charge in the highest level of assist. Yeah, you know, it, it, again, uh, one of the things about the algorithms that, that Yamaha uses and even on, a, on some of our other bikes, you'll see the fluctuations change. And I, my, only, my only thing is, I'm gonna say this to the audience, is yeah. understand that it's going to change based on what gear you're in, pedal cadence, and what kind of, what kind of terrain that you're on. So don't fret, I, mean, I, I see this often, people will come back and they, I changed the level of assist and all of a sudden my range dropped or, uh, it, it's like, yeah, absolutely. It's dynamic. It, it, it is dynamic, right. There's a lot of variables. Is it a windy day? You know, is, are your tires wet? Check your tire pressure. The tire pressure, that's a great one. And I've, a I've listed one. the tire pressure pressure back at the site and the stand over height and all that stuff might be time to just hop on this uh, give it a go and you know here's the rear speed reader and the magnet by the way when Joe was mentioning that there's you know it's measuring several uh, several inputs so I'm, I'm up at high mode I'm just gonna pedal a, around and give you some idea of how responsive this thing is thanks Joe yeah have fun that kickstand in the background. Yeah. No problem climbing this little hill. Uh, the Yamaha motors definitely give you good torque. They say up to 70 Newton meters on this motor versus 80 Newton meters with the uh, PWX and that's like a mountain specific. I also feel like, you know, I'm going pretty slow here, but with the, the larger wheel diameter, 700 which is equivalent of 28 inches it gives you a nice low attack angle so you can span right over bumps and cracks smooths it out again just a little bit of jitter kind of uh plasticky sound and that's because of the kickstand back here not too bad and that motor you know, it starts and stops fairly quickly, but there is a little bit of a delay sort of when you come off, but it's using a standard size chain ring, which means you can replace it or you can upgrade to two sprockets like we were saying before. Hey guys, you're right there on the seat stay. You're gonna hopefully be able to see that chain ring spinning, starting and stopping and get an idea for uh, how, how quick it is and just how much noise it makes. Maybe the suspension a little bit, just a sense for how the bike rides. Again, you might hear brr, brr, and that's the kickstand sort of bouncing around, which would be easy to remove, um, but I don't want to alarm you. The rest of the bike feels pretty solid. Brakes are feeling really solid. Uh, good power delivery. Above 100 RPM, the motor sort of fades out in terms of support. So for someone like me, I like to spin really fast and uh, sometimes I'm outpacing the motor, but it's very responsive. They have something called like zero cadence start uh, because it, it just gives you power right away. And a lot of people swear by this motor. They really like it. So, you know, I appreciate that. Also, uh, a little bit lighter weight. I think it's like seven and a half pounds where some of the Bosch motors are like eight or, you know, nine. So this is, uh, this is pretty decent. A lot of times I try to ride on, oh boy. Yeah, and I was sliding out there a little bit with the sand. Um, I try to ride on pavement so you, you know, you get a good feel for how quiet the motors are. I would say Yamaha's one of the quieter. Rosa is probably the quietest, but the PW, again, it's, it's kind of their like city or, you know, all around motor. It was the first one they introduced in the United States. Um, and it's still going strong. A lot of dealers love it in terms of reliability. 
One of the other things I really appreciate about the Rebel Cross and a lot of the Easy Motion bikes is that they have a sealed bearing headset. It's just, it's not gonna creak, it's not gonna rust over time. It's, it's an area where they could have gone cheap, like these grips here, you know, where they spin and stuff, but this, that's cheap to replace. The headset, you want that to work, and it's something that you can't really see as a consumer, so it's nice to know. I double checked on that, and then sealed bearing bottom bracket down here. Even though it's square tapered, that's fine for a bike like this. And I like that, you know, where the kickstand's mounted, it stays plenty clear of that uh, left crank arm. It's not gonna collide, and that was my gripe right there about the battery charging port position. Okay, so Joe's gonna hop on the Rebel Cross. I'm gonna chase him a little bit with the Rebel Gravel and just get some nice third person shots. Just getting it all dialed in. How tall are you, Joe? I'm five, five nine and shrinking. What's your, and what's your inseam? Uh, 30. 30, okay, I say that because it's got that nice, like, sort of sloped top tube and it lowers the standover height. Right. A little bit, so okay. Yeah, thank God, I mean, it's one of those things where for me, this is, this is. He's right at the, right it's at danger the, zone. Right at the limit. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Working pretty well. I just love how quiet these things are. Mud Patrol. Of course, welcome your feedback and questions that you might have, especially if you own one of these bikes or maybe you're comparing the two. We were talking about what I thought was the Evo in the van before. It was the Evo, you thought it was the Evo Cross, but yeah, it's the Evo 27.5. Evo 27.5, so that, you know, Easy Motion has just a ton of different bikes. I'll be reviewing a handful. And uh, as always, I hope you guys have fun out there and ride safe.